Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be again discussing about downstream processing. So we'll continue from where we left in the last video. So I've already made two videos under this topic. So you may check out the videos under downstreaming processing of biochemical and bioprocess engineering. So moving on with today's video, let's get started. So we'll today discuss about cell disruption. Earlier we discussed about filtration and then about centrifugation. So today we are going to discuss about cell disruption and furthermore techniques. So it's a basically mechanical technique as you can see. So there are some of the machines as you can know. So this machine is known as the sonicator as you can see in the pictures. There are three good pictures shown to you. So these does the work of cell disruption. So basically it disrupts the cell wall and membrane and rods are broken more easily than cocky. So basically these bacteria, bacteria uh, which come under the rods section or classification are easily broken than the cocky bacteria. And gram negative cells are more easily than gram positive. So there are some sort of differences and depends on the uh, features of each of the bacteria, how they look like and are. So rod, so rod bacteria are easily broken. Uh, then the cocky bacteria and gram negative cells are easily broken than the gram positive cells. So moving on with this and sonicator does the job. So moving on. So this is also another machine as you can see this is a, a French French press. So in this we apply the pressure as you can see and here we have the cell suspension and there is an impact plate. This is the cylinder and this is the plunger. So we push down this and all of the cells get broken down. And another mechanism or machine that we have is the homogenizer. So this is how it works. So this is the uh, tissues which uh, which are now which uh, which is shown that it contains sucrose homogenate and all of the stuff which uh, through which we apply pressure from the top or which gets uh, homogenized or it's rotated at a certain RTM, RPM and it is applied pressure to uh, downwards by rotating angles. So it thus does the job. So basically it rotates down and provides a constant pressure underneath and all throughout the cells. Moving on with this. So let's just talk about the basics of how the cell disruption takes place and this breaking of cells and tissues occur. So the first step is the purification of most proteins is to disrupt tissues and cells in a controlled fashion. So this is the first step as you can see. So this is the break cells with high frequency sound. So there are high frequency sound machines or such as homogenizers which can break cells. All right. So the second step which points to this. So using gentle mechanical procedures called homogenization, the plasma membranes of cells can be disrupted so that the cells contains are repeats. All right. So the second step is this which uh, which shows that the using of a mild detergent to make holes in the plasma membrane. All right. So we'll make holes by using any sort of mild detergents. All right. So the resulting thick soup is called a homogenate, which we have obtained after breaking the cells and we'll make some holes. All right. So, uh, so the third step, as you can see, the third step is this thing. So the third step is four cells through small hole using high pressure. So we have to surpass uh, these cells through some sort of gap so that uh, these cells even more break down, even uh, more like break into piece, bits and pieces. All right. So the basically the forcing cells through small holes using high pressure. So applying a lot of pressure on the top so that these cells pass through a small area so that they can be broken down even more. All right. And the fourth point is just crushing it using a plunger or something. So a shear cells between the close fitting rotating plunger on thick walls of glass vessels. So we just need to push apply as much pressure uh, not that pressure not that much pressure so, the, so that the test tube breaks but uh, adequate amount of pressure that the cell needs to break. Right. So when uh, so when we have done this uh, plunging job so we can observe this under a microscope. So we can observe more most of the microorganisms which are separated and most of the stuffs which are present in a cell. So moving on with so talking about the non mechanical part. So this was the mechanical part that we did because it required a lot of uh, tension and force and a lot of mechanical stuff plunging and pushing and a lot of force required. Right. So this is a non mechanical stuff. This won't require pushing and pulling everything. 
So this is in this non-mechanical stuff, uh, the first process, which is the osmotic shock. So basically it changes the osmotic pressure of the medium. All right. Also, the changing, or changing of osmotic pressure in the medium leads to breakage of cells. All right. Uh, the second that we have is the rupture with ice crystals, so freezing and then thawing, thawing a cell paste. So basically, after we keep us isolate cell isolate or particular cells in the in minus 20 degrees Celsius. So after taking that uh, particular isolate from fridge or somewhere uh, in the deep freezer, we tend to thaw them uh, by both our hands. In between, we keep the cell in a test tube and we try to thaw so that these break down. Right. So also we have another method, which is the heat shock. This is also a very successful method to break down cells. Next, we have the freeze drying after treatment with acetone, butanol, and the buffers. So buffers also do the job, which can be acetone, butanols, or any other buffer. And we have lysosome plus EDTA reaction which digests the bacterial cell wall, and EDTA chelates out the divalent ions from the cell envelope. So basically, remove a breakage of cell wall leads to breakage of the cell. So applying with lysosome plus EDTA. So EDTA is the main agent here. So, uh, so pouring some EDTA in small quantity does the job. And there are some other uh, methods such as antibiotics we can use as well to hinder the synthesis of cell wall. So this was the non-mechanical part of cell disruption. With this. So we just talk about the next process which we have after the disruption is the liquid liquid extraction or we have a simple process which is known as the extraction. All right. So the first extraction that we will study is liquid liquid extraction. So liquid liquid extraction is done by with the help of uh, separate inhibitory fermentation products. So definitely a fermentation products uh, such as a lot of a lot of them we have it and commonly separated products are ethanol, acetone and butanol. All right. So these are liquid liquid extractions are done with the help of some of the products, which is known as the ethanol, butanol or acetone. All right. Also, antibiotics are recovered by using uh, amyl acetate or isoamyl acetate. All right. So antibiotics can be also extracted using liquid liquid extraction with the help of amyl acetate and isoamyl acetate. And the next we have the liquid extraction should be non-toxic, selective, inexpensive and immiscible with fermentation process. So definitely this is a plus point. This is an important point as well. So liquid extraction should not be poisonous, should be non-toxic, selective, inexpensive and immiscible with the fermentation. Also liquid extraction should have high distribution coefficient for the product. All right. So this is this should have the high distribution coefficient for the product. And this, this is something that liquid liquid extraction is important for recovery process in the entire fermentation process. All right. So, so after the fermentation process gets over, we go on with filtration, then we go with centrifugation, then concentrating cells, then we go with uh, destruction, then after destruction, we come to extraction. Now it's the time for extracting the cells. So this is the point of this, which is one of the most important points in the fermentation process. So we can take out antibiotics and other important products that we need to extract out. All right. Moving on with this. So this is a basic diagram for liquid liquid extraction, as you can see. So this is the solvent or the thing that we need to pour in and adding in, adding it with immiscible solvent. So as you can see, the dahlia, lower diagram. All right. So this is the bacterial culture. So centrifugation of cells or leads to lysis, cell lysis via chemical agents. All right. So we have the supernatant here. So basically, which removes the all of the contaminants by removing the supernatant and repeating the washing and this by pouring the DNA solution here so that we get a pure solution out here. All right. So this is the recovery process that we follow. And this is a very easy recovery process. Simply the nothing in simple words, you just have to add the solution or any sort of immiscible solvent uh, in the extract that we got after destruction. And it will uh, after it both of them react with each other in this after we'll get the extracted product or the liquid that we need or which gets accumulated here. All right. So the next process recovery process that we have is the precipitation. All right. So after the process of uh, liquid liquid extraction, we have precipitation. 
basically this is the sorting out or we need to precipitate out or we need to take out all right or we need to get something which which is uh, which we get through sorting out by adding inorganic salts which is ammonium sulfate at high high ionic strength also solubility reduction at low temperature occurs by adding organic solvents which is temperature less than minus 5 degrees all right so these are some of the stuff that we needs to be added for a success of a reaction all right for precipitation so precipitation can be done with the help of sorting out by adding inorganic salts or i adding organic salts which are temperature less than minus 5 degrees celsius moving on with this so so we have some of the graphs here so the effect of inorganic salts on solubility of a typical protein so as we add it so we have nacl we have sodium uh, ammonium sulfate we have sodium sulfate sodium sulfate so this is this so nacl so we see nacl so the graph decreases so gradually decreases all right whereas for ammonium sulfate we see it decreases whereas the sodium sulfate it also decreases all right so effect of inorganic solvent occurs this way so these are the graphs done by s by s0 by 1 by 2 so this is not a important part so this is just shows the how the we can precipitate or how how not to precipitate but how solubility depends on these salts so moving on with this so we have another protein purification step which is known which we known as the dialysis all right so dialysis is one of the important steps that occurs after liquid liquid extraction and precipitation so after precipitation we move on with dialysis all right so this is the basically the removing of or removal of high salt concentration from proteins so removing high salt concentration from proteins all right so this is the start of dialysis all right all right so this is a some sort of a semi permeable dialysis bag as you can see here so this is a picture of a semi permeable dialysis bag containing proteins all right so all of the extract so we need to remove the salt extra amount of salt or high salt concentration from these bags all right this is the dialysis bag this is the solvent all right and this is the concentrated solution that we got all right so this solvent that is present inside the beaker helps to take out all of the extra high salt concentration from these concentrated solutions all right and this is the equilibrium state that we get after some time with the help of a dialysis bag so all of the extra salt concentration gets released in the solvent and this the the solution inside the dialysis bag remain gets less salt concentration so another step that we have is after moving from dialysis that that was easy process for dialysis so we have again here is the reverse osmosis so reverse the reverse osmosis i think is one of the easiest process which is just the opposite of osmosis all right so as you can see in the osmosis process so as you can see here basically in osmosis the movement of fluid occurs from higher concentration to lower concentration all right so from this way with the help of a semi permeable membrane present here all right so this is this is the same thing that we happens in the reverse osmosis what happens in reverse osmosis is basically a water purification process that uses a partially permeable membrane to remove ions unwanted molecules and larger particles from drinking water with the help of external pressure as you can see in the picture all right so this is the external pressure this is the sea water this is the fresh water so moves this way all right so uh, moving on one thing that i missed or wrongly said to you is the osmosis thing which was which will be definitely the opposite thing so as you can see the arrow here and the arrow here so the arrow indicates the direction of flow of fluids so the water moves from this direction to this or basically from lower concentration to higher concentration whereas reverse osmosis takes place in the in the reverse direction definitely so when basically this the higher concentration moves to lower concentration so this is simple as this and also it has some of the technicalities such as reflection coefficient so which is the fraction of solute molecules retained on one side of the membrane in the presence of solvent flux and this thing is zero complete solute passage is obtained if one no solute passes is achieved so zero indicates a complete solute passage is obtained so the reaction is done one does not one indicates no solute passage is achieved moving on with this so we have osmotic uh, flow with pressure 
So this is the normal osmosis as you can see fresh water to saline water uh, this is the reverse osmosis it occurs in the reverse direction with the help of external pressure so external pressure enforces to move from to move in the reverse direction all right also reverse osmosis have certain sort of uh, technicality such as concentrate polarization which is the deposition of solute molecules on membrane surfaces causing larger resistances on spot cellular solvent flow and overcome by increasing the degree of turbulence on the membrane surface. So these are some of the technicalities for uh, reverse osmosis. And again, we have the last part for this video, which is the filtration. After everything happens, after osmosis and everything, we have the ultra filtration and the micro filtration step. All right. So this is the micro filtration. This is the ultra filtration. This is the nano filtration. This is the reverse osmosis. All right. So this is the process that needs to go through so these are uh, all of the things go through so to obtain a clear solution so as you can see these are some of the choices of filters that you can choose depending on the purification rate so this is basically uh, what what it does is basically it interacts with proteins it has some sort of mechanical stability it is chemically stable by biocompatibility is maintained flux rate is there and ease of sterilization easily sterilizable and cost is definitely lower and types of membrane can, which can be used for ultra filtration micro filtration are it can which can be polymeric material like cellulose acetate nylon uh, polytetra fluoroethylene or polyvinyl difluoride or polysulfone or ceramics so let's just keep this video till here i know it's it became a very long video so thank you for bearing with me and I'll be back with another video very soon. So till then, stay tuned for more and thank you for watching.